So what we're gonna do now is we're going to walk through a case study that will illustrate how to put all, a lot of these things into practice. And this is case study EX3, and there's two parts. We'll cover the first part today. So this shows a boatload of RX Java observable operators, all the ones that are listed here, and it does them to asynchronously create, multiply, and display big fraction objects, even if something goes wrong, even if an error occurs. And it also shows some operators from the single class, like ignore element, flat map, completable, and so on. We haven't talked a lot about single here, but uh, we might cover that because we have a few more classes left to go. So this particular example can be found in the EX3 folder in my reactive observable folder, and that's in my live lessons GitHub repository. So we're now in the EX3 project in my GitHub repository. Let's go ahead and take a look at the driver program. This is going to show how to use a whole slew of RX Java operators. It'll also show how to use the RX Java flat map concurrency idiom and various other classes like single and maybe and so on in addition to observ observable. So let's go ahead and take a look at the main program. This will also illustrate the async task barrier in all of its glory. So you can see we start out in main and we call async task barrier register and we register a bunch of things. We're registering a bunch of method references and those method references are the methods under test in this particular test program. And we're gonna take a look at test fraction exception one, test fraction exception two, test fraction exception three, and test fraction multiplications We'll take a look at those four methods here. Now if we, oh, and then down here you can see after we register all of those method references, we then come down and we say, hey, async task barrier, please go ahead and run all the tasks. What that will do is, as we'll see, that launches all those operations running asynchronously in the background using the computation scheduler. And then the calling thread, the main thread, if you will, is going to call blocking get on the single that's returned from run task. So this will block until all the other asynchronous tasks are done. When everything's finished, we'll print out the number of tests that completed successfully. The reason that we do this is because if we start those operations running and the main thread exits by falling off the end of main, then the whole program is gonna shut down because the computation's thread pool uses daemon threads and we won't get the results if they haven't finished by that point which would be bad. So let's go take a look at observable EX. So this is the class that implements all the different methods under test. It's got a static final, which is a random number generator, which we're gonna to use to generate these big fractions randomly, or parts of big fractions randomly. Let's take a look at test fraction exception one. And this is gonna show one form of exception handling using the on error return operator. So the first thing we do is we're going to create a string buffer. Remember, string buffers can't, uh, sorry, string buffers can work in multiple threads. String builders cannot, string buffers can. And we say we're the test fraction exception one method, we're calling it right now. And then what we do is we create ourselves an error handler, which is a function that maps a throwable or an exception to a return value, which is a big fraction. And here's what the error handler looks like. You can see it's basically a lambda function, which is going to append the exception name onto the string buffer. And then if it's a, if the exception is the arithmetic exception, we're just gonna convert that to zero. Otherwise, we're gonna rethrow the exception because it's something we didn't expect. We're expecting to get the arithmetic exception. We then come down here and make ourselves an array of integers. And you can see the integers are three, four, two, zero, one, where zero is intended to blow things up. So that's a zero denominator, as you remember from probably second or third grade, you can't divide by zero without getting an error. What we then do is we take that denominators array and we turn it into an observable. So now we have a stream of those values, which have the values what is it, three, four, two, zero, one. And then we're gonna use the flat map concurrency item. I've mentioned that before, we'll see it 
used in its full-blown glory here. The way to read this is, for each denominator, 3, 4, 2, 0, 1, go ahead and take that denominator one at a time and then emit it by taking the big fraction for some random numerator and then creating a big fraction whose denominator is whatever the denominator is. So when it's 3, 4, 2, 1, we're fine. When it's 0, we got problems. Let's assume it works just for sake of argument. It's not zero. So in a so what we're going to do then is we're going to say I want to omit that big fraction and then have it run in the context of the computation scheduler. So the computation scheduler is a scheduler very much like the I/O scheduler, except it's a fixed size pool of threads, typically the number of cores by default, and that will then arrange to run this whole inner observable in some background computation thread. Now, if something goes wrong, like an arithmetic exception occurs, we want the error handler that we defined to be to take the flow of control and then do whatever it said to do, which in this case was going to return big fraction of zero if it's the arithmetic exception. Otherwise, if there is no error, it's non-zero, what we're going to do is we're going to log the result, so that'll store it someplace we can get to later. And then we're going to go ahead and perform a big fraction multiplication in the background thread from scheduler's computation. So we're going to multiply the reduced big fraction by some constant, and then we're going to have that be emitted. So what's going to be emitted here from flat map will be all those results, including the conversion of the arithmetic exception into big fraction zero. What we then do, you can see that's the flat map concurrency idiom. All those things are going to run concurrently. Then we're going to go ahead and use filter to suppress any big fraction whose results are less than or equal to zero. So we only allow things to come through that are non-zero. So in other words, when the arithmetic exception occurs, we just ignore it. And then we collect these results into a list by using collect with the two list factor method, which we get from Java streams. And then we use flat map completable, which is what we talked about before. And what that's going to do is it's going to call this print list helper method out of big fraction utils. And let's take a look at that real quick. So if we go over here, print list takes a list of big fractions and a string buffer. And it's going to create a local consumer, which is going to display the results as mixed fractions. So it's going to take a list, and it's going to iterate through each item in the list, convert it to a mixed string, and then append it, and then finally display it. So that's how it's going to handle this. And then what we do here is we convert the list into a single. So we've emitted the list as a single. We're going to display the list. And then, and here's the important thing, we're going to tell the stream, ignore the result. So ignore element. And so what that's going to do is that's going to finish up what it was doing, which was to display the results. And then it's going to return a completable. And then that completable, as we saw back here, will be used by flat map completable to simply indicate back to the caller, which is the async task barrier framework, that we have finished successfully. So all these methods return completables, which indicate when they are done running in the background. All right. So that is that particular operation. That's test fraction exception one. Let's take a look at test fraction exception two. So test fraction exception two is going to do the same thing. It'll create a list of denominators including a zero, and I added a couple extra things here. <clears throat> and then we're going to do something slightly different here. So in this case, we're going to make ourselves a local variable that's a function which takes a throwable and an observable, and we're going, it's, sorry, it's going to return an observable. We're going to log the exception, and we're going to return an empty observable. So that's how we're going to handle errors here. We're going to use the on error return item method, which will return an empty observable. 
and you'll see how that works. Once again, a lot of this is very similar. We're going to use our denominators list this time as opposed to an array, just, just to be a little different. So you can see we had a list of denominators. We use from interval instead of from array. We once again are going to create the appropriate big fraction. <clears throat> and then if something goes awry here, we're going to return big fraction zero and that will terminate the stream at this point. And once again, we collect it into a list. Flat map completable works exactly the same way. Let me, let me run this thing so you can see what the results are before we get too far along. So you'll see here with test fraction exception one, that was the, the first thing that we showed. You can see that we get the divide by zero exception here. And you'll notice when we logged the results, we ended up with a zero value. But the final results filtered out the zero value. You'll also notice something else interesting here. Test fraction exception one was the first method we ran. However, it was not the first method to complete. The first method to complete was test fraction exception two. The reason for that, and we'll go back and look at this in a second, test fraction exception two doesn't use concurrency. It just runs it in the calling thread. So it's actually faster than doing this stuff in a pool of threads because we didn't have very many items to work on. So the value of n was low. So the same n times q heuristic applies for reactive streams as with Java parallel streams or parallelism in general, where it only makes sense to use parallelism when you have a large n. But I'm just showing you that when we do something that takes uses concurrency, it actually ran slower, so it finished second, even though it started first. You'll notice that test fraction exception two prints out some values, and when it reaches the zero, it prints out zero, and then it returns an empty stream, so, or an empty observable. So in that case, it just ceases to continue onwards. So that's what this particular handler does. So this particular example log and return empty observable um, is going to, to handle things in a different way. <clears throat> OK, so let's go take a look here. And so that's, that's how that particular processing worked. Now let's take a look at test fraction exception three. And in this case, we're going to have the same thing, log and return empty observable. We're going to have the same list of denominators except this time we're going to use on error resume next. And let's go take a look and see what that does. So here we're going to have our list of denominators turned into an observable. Once again, we create a big fraction that may have a zero in the denominator, except this time we're going to call on error resume next, passing in log and return empty observable. And so, Everything else is the same. So let's go take a look and see what the results are for that. So you can see here in this case, what happens is when we divide by zero, we, we catch that error and then we just stop at that point. We don't emit anything when that occurs, when that error occurs. So that's slightly different from what we looked at before. And then the fourth example we'll look at here is called test fraction multiplications. This is going to do some other stuff, but it'll also illustrate a few more operators in RxJava. So in this case, we have a list of big fractions with these values. We make a consumer, which will essentially print the results and display them. And then we have our stream. And you can see the stream starts by taking a list of big fractions, turning them into a, an observable with the from iterable factor method. Then we're going to use the flat map concurrency idiom to multiply all these fractions together. You can see what this does. Multiply fractions is going to use subscribe on in order to be able to subscribe this inner stream to run on the scheduler that's provided as a parameter. And that will go ahead and multiply the big fractions together, a constant by the one that we pass in as a parameter. So this is going to take place in a background thread from whatever scheduler we passed in. And of course, the scheduler we passed in was the computation scheduler, which is that fixed size thread pool. 
In this case, we log the big fractions, we reduce them, so we take all the multiplied big fractions and we reduce them down into one result, which we then display. And as before, we return ignore element, which says to the calling, the calling uh, thread, which, which in this case is the async task framework, we're done, don't worry about it, everything finished successfully. So if you take a look at test fraction multiplications, you can see that it did these multiplications and then it summed them together and it returned the sum of the big fractions. So again, just kind of illustrating how these things work, you'll also notice that this particular set of computations is running in a background thread, and this other one is running in the main thread. The, the numbers here indicate the threads where the printouts are occurring. And you can see that things that run in one thread, thread one is the main thread, and then these other threads with higher values than one or some, some background thread running somewhere.